Hey everyone, this is the manufacturing update. If you're looking for design and engineering updates for Fusion 360, make sure to click the button in the top right and we'll show you everything there is for that side of the thing. But now let's jump into the manufacturing. Let's go. We'll kick this update off with some of the most obvious changes. Tabbed toolbars are now in the manufacturer workspace of Fusion 360. We grouped operations by type. So you'll find 2D, 3D, and multi-axis milling, as well as drilling, under the milling tab, turning and drilling operations under the turning tab, and so on. Now buckle up, because there are a ton of updates and improvements to our turning strategies. The first one you'll probably notice is that Profile is now broken out into roughing and finishing operations. Not only does this clean up which parameters are where, it allows us to start mapping profile roughing operations to canned cycles. There were some other incremental changes to help us map to canned cycles. The retract heights radii is gone since this didn't map and honestly didn't make much sense for most people. In the passes tab, you'll see a checkbox to use canned cycles. When this is checked, any options that do not map to a canned cycle will disappear. This also works in reverse. So if I change my pass direction to back cutting, the can cycle checkbox goes away. This should help avoid conflicting parameters, making it more clear what can and can't map to can cycles as you program. If you do happen to enable something that doesn't map, Fusion gives you a helpful warning so that you can go back and make any necessary changes. We have post support for Fanuc, Siemens, Doosan, and Haas but make sure you download the latest post from the online library, as this is where we keep the most up-to-date post processors. This seems like a good time to quickly remind everyone about section analysis, which is available in the inspect menu since last month's update and makes it way easier to see what's going on with internal turning operations and sometimes just in general. The next major improvement is tangential extensions for turning passes. As you might guess, this adds an additional extension in the direction of the toolpath. This should be a game changer for anyone who is manually creating geometry to get this result before. Since this extends the toolpath along its current direction, take care that your containments give you the extension that you're actually looking for. If I include the back and front chamfers of this part, the extension goes off at an angle and might dig into my stock. If I contain the toolpath to the back and front edges, it's now extending straight which might make more sense for me. Along with those two big ticket items, there are some additional improvements to both roughing and finishing profile operations. It's now easier to set the pass direction in the passes tab, where horizontal passes go along the part axially and map to G71, vertical passes go along the part radially and map to G72, and back cutting is how you would program tools like Sandvix prime turning tools. We also fixed a problem where the tool would roll over corners when the back limit was applied at an edge. The new toolpath does not roll over the corner, which should help when combining toolpaths. This also pairs nicely with tangential extensions. Up next, there are tool limits in the geometry tab to control how the tool behaves at the back limit of the part. When cutting edge is selected, the front edge of the tool will touch it, which can leave a little scallop of stock. When contact point is selected, it pushes the contact point of the tool to the back limit, meaning no stock is left. There's also a new option for radial tool limits in the radii tab. This will similarly push the tool contact point all the way to the inner or outer radius limit without leaving that little scallop. The clearest example is with the little nubs that could be left on the front of the part without contact point enabled. One final improvement for profile roughing operations specifically is the addition of linking clearance in the linking tab. This will clear the stock by the set value for Z and X, and the retract distance will add a 45 degree retract for every cutting pass. Note that the Z and X clearances are added on top of any tangential extensions that were set in the geometry tab. Now onto some improvements to profile finishing. In the passes tab, we've simplified compensation types by removing some options that were milling specific. Now you will only see the turning specific options in computer for uncompensated toolpaths 
and in control for compensated toolpaths when you want to adjust feature size at the machine. If you want to see the programmed point during stock simulation, check Programmed Point checkbox to see the tool compensation points. In the linking tab, there are several new options. First, leads are now much more predictable. The leads are always relative to the toolpath itself, so if you enter zero degrees as the direction, the lead will be in line with the toolpath and you've basically created a tangential extension. However, the lead out checks against remaining stock. So if I ask for a zero degree lead that would go right through some stock on the back of my part, Fusion gives a warning that I'm about to cut through a lot of stock. If that's what I want to do, there's a checkbox to allow to cut remaining stock that will get rid of this warning and let my tool do just that. Any other degree will be counterclockwise from the front and clockwise from the back. Note that the lead in does not check for gouges against the stock and you will get exactly what you ask for. If I enter 225 degrees, I get exactly that, even though it definitely doesn't look like my best option. Make sure to take a close look and simulate your toolpaths to make sure you're getting what you intend. Finally, there is a radial extension option for profile finishing that will extend the end of the toolpath up to the outer radius set in the radii tab. This helps ensure the tool safely clears the stock after finish pass. Note that this option is not there if same as lead in is enabled, so be sure to uncheck that box if you want radial extensions. Okay, that's it for turning this time around. I know we are very excited about these improvements and I'm looking forward to hearing what you all think in the comments and on the forums. Up next, there are some improvements to the manufacturing extension. Steep and Shallow now has five axis tilting in preview, available under the extension section of preferences for those subscribed to the extension. When this is enabled, a new tab called the Tool Axis tab will appear, and you'll be able to adjust the tilt mode of the tool. The Lead Lean option allows you to specify lead and lean angles for the tool, and these angles are set relative to the surface normal. When the lead and lean angles are set to zero, the tool remains perpendicular to the surface it's machining. Tilt Override will allow you to specify a preferred tilt angle relative to the tool orientation z-axis. Rather than the tool remaining perpendicular at all times, Fusion will try to tilt the tool to the desired angle. If there would be a collision at the desired angle, Fusion will adjust the tool tilt to avoid gouges between the model and the tool. Make sure shaft and holder is on in the tool tab. Tool axis limits will limit the total tool tilt relative to the z-axis, where remove toolpath will trim any areas that violate that limit. Move tool axis will attempt to machine the rest of the part at the maximum allowable tilt angle. In this simulation, we can see that the areas that were removed by remove toolpath are machined with move tool axis with the tool at a 45 degree tilt, which was the maximum limit. Vertical mode will keep the tool oriented along the z-axis of the current tool orientation. If multi-axis tilting is checked, the tool will automatically tilt to avoid collisions. We know this dropdown only has one option today. Don't worry, there are more on the way. Again, shaft and holder must be on in the tool tab for this to work. This is also a great time to remind everyone about the relatively recent addition of evenly spaced points as a smoothing option in steep and shallow. If you have a modern machine that's capable of reading in lots of points, we've received a lot of positive feedback that this works very well for smoothing out machine motion and improving surface finish. For surface inspection, we added an option to load in results from Fusion Team. This way, you can load in results that were uploaded remotely by a teammate or from a different computer. The file name now appears next to the measure node that shows up in the browser when you import results. This will help you differentiate inspection results from different dates or different component batches. We also opened up import inspection results to everyone, whether you have the extension or not, so you can explore sample files or review inspection results from a time when you were subscribed to the extension. Back to non-extension updates, we improved 2D bore to include a step-down option that is based on angle rather than distance. Thanks to Steinworks for the suggestion on the idea station, 
and we know a lot of you have been asking for this for a long time. Last but not least, we improved accessibility analysis so that you can check inaccessible regions from both directions rather than just positive or negative, helping you see any areas you can't reach with a simple part flip. Remember, you can toggle the visibility of analysis tools in the browser under the analysis folder. It is so exciting to see all that turning functionality make it into Fusion. Aaron, are you so pumped to try it out? Yes. Wow, I can't wait for Aaron to get back. But Autodesk University is right around the corner in November. Make sure to check it out. There's Fusion 360 classes just in about everything Fusion. Other than that, have a good week, guys. See you next time. <laughs>